Hey everyone, welcome to my review of the K-Subs Mercury S5. K-Subs has been well known for its large enthusiast cases, but more recently K-Subs has been releasing a lot of new cases, including some small form factor cases. And K-Subs now has three product lines, the Magnum, Merlin and Mercury. For me, what really sets K-Subs apart is, first of all, customization. There are so many different options available for each case labs case, so it means you can configure them how you want them. Also, design. All of the outer panels are quick release, so it means these cases are easy to build into. They're also completely bolted together, there's no rivets, so it makes these cases easy to dismantle for modding. And finally, quality. These cases are constructed completely from aluminium, and they have a durable powder coat. Now this is what you can expect to see when you remove your new Case Labs case from the box. All Case Labs cases now come flat packed, which means reduced shipping costs. There is the option of having some of the cases shipped fully assembled, but these cases are quick and easy to assemble. So you can see here all of the components and panels for the case have been properly individually wrapped for protection. Included with the case comes an assembly manual. And I've assembled a number of the different Case Labs cases now, and the assembly manual is easy to follow, and the process is really not that difficult. You also get all of the necessary mounting components, screws, bolts, cover panels, and a socket driver. Now, as I've mentioned, there is many different accessories and configuration options available for each of the Case Labs cases. And I don't actually have all of the different accessories for this case here. So instead of covering all of them, which would be very confusing, I'm going to put the information on the screen from the Case Labs website, which covers all of the different options. So that will give you a basic idea. But I'm also going to put a link in the video description to the Case Labs website. So make sure you check that out if you want to see all of the different options for this case. So first of all, let's start with a look at the front panel. On the right hand side of the front panel is the 5.25 inch bays. And this case has seven 5.25 inch bays. The options I have here is an accessory for mounting a 240 millimeter radiator and fans. So this takes up six of the 5.25 inch bays. Then at the top, I have a ventilated 5.25 inch bay cover. On the left side of the front panel at the bottom, you can see a small ventilated area. Moving up is the switch panel. And on the switch panel is the power and reset button. And these are high quality vandal switches. For the power button, we have a 22 millimeter blue ring vandal switch, which shows power on. For the reset button, we have a 16 millimeter red dot vandal switch, which shows hard drive activity. Moving on to a look at the top panel. The option that I have here is the 36mm extended version, and you can see it has a large ventilated area on the right, and it's solid on the left. Now this option gives you an extra 36mm above the top of the case itself, and it gives you more room for installing fans and radiators. It actually allows you to install the fans in the 36mm extended area. We'll take a look at this shortly. Looking at the side panels, I have the same option for both of them, which is the side panel with the extra large window. And you can see that the window is a good size. It is definitely big enough to show off all of the hardware inside of the case. Looking at the rear panel of this case, you can see the interesting internal layout. At the bottom, we have the power supply mounting area. To the right of this is some ventilation, and this is honeycomb ventilation which means there's two different types of ventilation in this case, the honeycomb and also the typical case labs ventilation. Above this is the motherboard tray. On the left is the back IO area. On the right is the expansion slots. Above the expansion slots, you can see some more ventilation and two cutouts for water cooling tubing. Then to the left of this is a 120 millimeter fan mounting position. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Case Labs cases, this is where the interesting design of these cases will really start to stand out. I have now removed all of the external cover panels from the case. The front cover panel, top cover panel, and both of the side panels. And you can see that this gives access to all of the mounting components underneath. 
And it's this part of the design of Case Labs cases that makes them so easy to build into because all of the outer panels are quick release. They can be quickly and easily removed. And it's also this aspect of the design that makes them extremely customizable, easy to modify. And there's really nothing else out there that is designed like this. Looking at the inside of the cover panels, you can see how they attach to the case. You will notice that wherever you look around this case, you can see the high quality construction and paint job. Looking at the inside of the windowed side panel, you can see that the window is easily removable just by undoing these nuts. Now for a look at the inside of the case. This case can fit MITx and MATx motherboards. So we'll start by taking a look at the bottom panel. This is the power supply mounting area at the back of the case. And you can see that there's a ventilated area here. This is more honeycomb ventilation. So this means that the power supply can be mounted face up or face down and still receive good ventilation. At the front of the bottom panel you can see a cover and underneath this cover is a mounting position for a 140mm fan. On this side of the case you can see a brace which holds the motherboard tray in position. This is really the only purpose of this brace although it does also obviously add overall strength to the case. Looking at the motherboard tray itself, you can see that it has a large cutout for accessing backplates. This cutout is also for routing CPU power cables. I find that once the motherboard is installed, there's no room left for routing the CPU power cable, so you should actually route it before you install the motherboard. You can see that the motherboard tray is just a simple panel, and it's easily removable just by undoing four screws. A removable motherboard tray is always a big plus for me. It makes cases so much quicker and easier to build into. You can see that on the other side of the case, the motherboard tray is supported by a large panel. So in the top of this panel, there's a single cable routing hole, which is mainly for front panel cables, but also for SATA data cables potentially. On the front side of this panel, it is mostly blank, but there is another cable routing hole. And this is for SATA power and SATA data cables, because on the other side of this panel is the mounting area for SSDs and hard drives. So now for a look at the back panel. I covered most of the back panel from the outside of the case, but you can see that there's mounting holes to mount the power supply facing up or down. This case has five expansion slots, and you can see that the slot covers are solid. So above this is some ventilation. You can see the 120 millimeter fan mounting position, and also the two holes for routing water cooling tubing, which I don't really see as being necessary in a case labs case, but I guess it's good to have every option available. And these have been blocked off with plastic covers. Now looking at the inside of the front panel. So you can see the accessory which I mentioned previously to mount a 240 millimeter radiator and fans. So it's designed for the fans to be mounted between the ventilated panel and the inner panel and then the radiator on the inside. And this can be dismantled so you can see that there is actually screws down either side there is six screws holding this together and it needs to be dismantled for the fans and the radiator to actually be mounted because they need to be mounted from the front side and you can see that the ventilated panel is in the way of that so this just pushes on to the front panel and the design of this case is excellent the the 5.25 inch bay design there's these little rods that stick out and then everything that mounts into the 5.25 inch bays in case labs cases fits onto these little rods and then the screws actually screw in from the front side so the cover panel needs to be removed to access the mounting screws for everything that goes into the 5.25 inch bays so you can see that even the ventilated 5.25 inch bay cover panel has this same design you can also see that there is anti-vibration grommets on all of the holes that fit onto the rods for this particular accessory. Looking from the other side of the case, next to the 5.25 inch bays, you can see the power and reset buttons. The cables for these are sleeved. 
but there is still a lot of wire exposed. So it's a reasonable sleeving job, but personally, I always redo Case Labs sleeving. Underneath the power and reset buttons, you can see a small opening. This is for the option of front panel I.O. There's the option of two USB 3 connectors on the front panel. Now looking at the hard drive and SSD mounting area. Now this case by default can fit up to four 2.5 inch drives and two 3.5 inch drives. But this can be massively increased with optional accessories. So you can see that there's an entire separate compartment just for hard drives and SSDs. And it is a large compartment. It is really a lot larger than it needs to be. There's a lot of extra space here. And I'm going to talk about this in the conclusion. Wherever you look in Case Labs cases, there is a whole lot of extra space. At the back, we have some honeycomb ventilation. So this area is well ventilated. In the middle, we have the cable routing hole for SATA power and SATA data cables. So this cable routing hole is plenty big enough for all of the cables. And at the front, we have a small amount of ventilation. Now for a closer look at the 3.5 inch and 2.5 inch bays. So these are quick and easy to remove. There's four nuts to remove per bay. And the best way to remove these nuts is with a socket driver. It's really the only way. It's difficult to get any other tool in there. And these bays need to be removed so that hard drives and SSDs can be installed. So there's a simple mounting system for both. For the 3.5 inch bays, you have an anti-vibration mounting system, and it's just a screw and a piece of rubber which slots into the bays. And for the 2.5 inch bay, the drives just screw straight into position. I've now removed the motherboard tray and top panel. Case Labs refers to this top panel as a drop-in mount, and the option I have here is a mount for a 360mm radiator. There are six screws to undo to remove the drop-in mount. So this means that you can easily remove the drop-in mount to install the radiator and fans. This is a whole lot easier than trying to reach up underneath the top panel to install the radiator and fans, which is often extremely difficult. This also means that you can remove the drop-in mount to give easier access to work on the build. And considering the horizontal motherboard tray, this is going to make things a whole lot easier. Taking a closer look at the motherboard tray, you can see that all of the threads in this case are extended inserts, which obviously massively improves the strength of the threads. On two sides of the motherboard tray, it's folded to improve the strength and aesthetics. Looking at the drop-in mount, you can see the mounting area for a 360mm radiator. There is cable routing holes, and there's also cutouts at both ends for the inlet and outlet. Looking underneath the case, you can see that it has nice big rubber case feet. They're made from a firm and durable rubber. They're approximately 25 millimeters in height, so this means that there's a good gap underneath the case for airflow to the power supply and also the other fan mounting position. You can also see there's some other threads underneath the case, and this is actually for mounting a pedestal to the bottom of the case. So this is just another one of the many options for Case Labs cases. It's now time for me to conclude this review. It's interesting to see what Case Labs has done with the designs in their smaller cases, and I'm impressed with the horizontal motherboard tray design. It's simple but effective. I've heard a number of people say that a lot of the Case Labs cases are bigger than they need to be because the space is badly optimized, but I must say I disagree with this because these cases are targeted at the extreme high end. They're enthusiast cases, and they're about as high end as it gets, and you expect to have extra space in a high-end case. In the end, it just gives you more freedom. It allows for more modding possibilities for all of the different customization options available for each of the Case Labs cases. It also allows for the installation of more water cooling components. And that's something I look for when I'm choosing a case for a water cooled build. One of the first things I look at is radiator capacity. And so many cases have such restricted radiator capacity. And that's why I often turn to case labs. They have incredible radiator capacity, even the smaller cases, as you can see here with the case labs Mercury S5. You only need to add a pedestal to this case 
and you can add another two 360 millimeter radiators. And then the MITx version of this case, the Case Labs Mercury S3, can still fit a couple of 280 millimeter radiators without the pedestal. So incredible radiator capacity and capacity for water cooling components in general, because that's really what these cases are designed for. Now for anyone questioning the pricing of Case Labs cases, if you take a look at what you are getting for the price, there is nothing else like it out there. These cases are constructed from expensive materials, 100% aluminium, mostly 2.3 millimeter aluminium, high quality durable powder coat. Everything about these cases is extremely high quality and a Case Labs case is going to last you for many years through many builds. There's very few things about this case that I can pick on and the only thing that I've found is the cable routing and the ability to hide cables is not perfect but this is only a very small problem. I'm going to give this case a 9.5 out of 10. A big thanks to Case Labs for sending this case out for a review and making this review possible. Coming up I'm going to be doing a build into this case and there will be a build log so make sure you check that out. That sums up this video, thanks for watching, please subscribe, like and favourite if you want to see more.